Hi and welcome back. In our last video we began learning about how to use CSS to format our um, web page. In this video we're going to continue on learning about how to um, work with styles and specifically we're going to look at the um, different text formatting properties that are inside of CSS. And if you downloaded the completed version of um, this project with all the different resources and whatnot, I actually created um, a couple of handouts for this course. One is called CSS Vocabulary and Grammar Basics, and the other is HTML Vocabulary and Grammar Basics. And um, these two handouts have all the notes for this video series in addition to having a basic vocabulary list of tags that you're going to need to know. And you can see there aren't very many of them here, but this gives you a nice um, sort of cheat sheet to work from. Also talks about some of the uh, more used attributes inside of HTML. And the same, I created the same thing for CSS, where we've got all the different notes about CSS that you're going to get in this video series and then also a CSS properties vocabulary list group by type and this will go through all the different properties that you should learn in CSS and there are uh, hundreds of different CSS properties but um, really these are the most common ones that um, you're going to use day in and day out. So as you're just starting to learn CSS, this is a good goal to really learn how these properties work. And again, um, if you uh, downloaded the completed version of this project, um, you get all the handouts that I create and all the templates and projects and, and resources that I use. So we're going to go ahead and again, right now we're going to talk about the text formatting properties. And there are a few of them. Font family, that's the actual typeface that you're going to use. Font size, that's pretty self-explanatory. We'll talk a little bit more about that in a moment. Font weight, that's usually whether it's bold or normal. Font style, that's usually whether it's italicized or normal. Color, we saw that, how it affects the font color. And color is a little bit um, of an oddball because we have font family, font size, font weight, font style. You would expect this to be font color, but it's not. It's just simply color. And then we have the line height property, which is, if you have a paragraph of text, it's the amount of space um, in between the lines. The text align property, which allows you to align text left, right, or center and text decoration and that mainly allows you to put things like underlines on text. So let's go ahead and take a look and see how these work actually in practice. I'm going to jump back in here to Dreamweaver and I'm going to delete those styles that we created in the last exercise. And first thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and format our H1s. And we're going to specify the font, the font size, the color, um, whether it's bold, the tout. We're going to go through all of that. So again, I'm going to create a tag style here called H1. And then I'm going to create a curly brace. And the first item that I'm going to go ahead and put in here is font family. And again, Dreamweaver gives you some of the most common options to put in here. And I'm going to go ahead and select this one here, Arial Helvetica Sans Serif. 
and then again I close my property value statement with a semicolon. Now first question most people ask is why are there actually three font names here Ariel, Helvetica, and Sans Serif. And the reason for that is in order for your visitor to see a font that you use, that font has to be loaded onto their computer. Now there are quite a few ways that you can go about doing that. You can do it uh, by embedding fonts into your web page. You can do it by using a font service like Google Web Fonts. Or you can depend on um, the font that you specify being on the visitor's computer. And that's the reason why we have three different fonts here. Arial is our first choice. So if the browser finds Arial on the visitor's computer, it will use that. But if it doesn't find Arial, let's say um, your visitor is using an older Mac that doesn't have Arial on it. Well, it's going to move to the second option here, which is Helvetica. And again, older Macs are going to have that font available, so they'll use Helvetica. And then finally, if the browser doesn't find Area or Helvetica, it's going to use a font called Sans Serif, which is a very basic generic font that most systems come with. So whether you're using a Mac or a Windows machine or a Linux computer, whether your computer is um, a week old or 10 years old, Sans Serif is going to be available. So this is just an order of priority for loading different fonts. And you can have as many here as you want. And then I'm going to go ahead, and again, I typed a semicolon at the end to end that. I'm going to go ahead and hit enter and tab a couple times. And the next thing that I want to do is specify the font size, which in this case, I'm going to say I want my font to be 32 pixels. Now if you're new to web design you're probably used to measuring fonts not with pixels but in points. You know for example in Microsoft Word you may say that your your paragraphs are in 12 point font. Well a point is a unit of measurement that's meant for printing. It's not necessarily meant to be displayed on the screen. The computer translates points into pixels for you when you're in Microsoft Word or Adobe InDesign or Microsoft Excel or a program like that, but there is a conversion there. When we're dealing with websites, most of the time we're going to size our fonts using pixels. Now, go back to the last video that we did. You remember when we actually set the link up. Our last attribute was media equals screen. And you'll remember I said that we can set the media type to a, a variety of different things, the two most common being screen and print. So if you were creating a print style sheet, a style sheet that's meant to be interpreted by a printer instead of a monitor, well then you would use points. And you might say the font size should be 32 points. But we're going to go ahead and use pixels. Whoops. There are other units of measurement that you can use for fonts. You can use percentages. You can use a unit of measurement called um, an M. We're not going to get into um, all those different variations um, in this class. If uh, you're curious at the end of this video um, about learning more about CSS, um, watch our Introduction to HTML and CSS video series, and that goes much more into detail about both HTML and CSS. So we're going to say the font size is going to be 32 pixels. We're going to say the font weight 
is going to be bold and the font style we'll go ahead and uh, say that that's going to be italic and the color we will make red again and then I've gone ahead and that's all the styles that I want so I'm going to go ahead and close my curly brace and again you can place that wherever you want at the end there you could tab it over if that makes your style sheet a little bit more readable or I could put the curly brace right there whatever is most readable for you I usually go ahead and leave that just like that and now what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm just going to copy this text and paste it down here and I'm going to change the h1 to h2 and the font family I want it to stay Arial but the font size should be smaller because this is a second level heading I'm going to go ahead and make that 24 I'm going to leave the font weight alone as bold but I'm going to say the font style is normal and the font color is going to be oops, blue. And then finally we'll do one more. Again I'm going to highlight that and copy it, paste it in there and we'll do our H3s. And again I'm just going to make a slight change there. Let's say I'm going to make this 18 pixels and the font color is going to be green. So I'm going to go ahead and save that, come back into my work, uh, my HTML file, and preview it in a browser. And there are my H1s. You can see they're red, 32 point, bold, italic. And then we have there's an H3, there's an H2 and then there's another H3. Everything else has been left alone. If I wanted to come in here and specify the way my paragraphs are going to look, all my P tags are going to look, I could do that. I could say, um, let's say I want my paragraphs I'm going to set the font family to courier, which is sort of that typewriter font, just to make it different. I'm going to set the font size to 14 pixels, the font weight to normal, and the color, just so that they stand out a little bit, I'm going to go ahead and make it orange. And again, I've got to remember to close my curly brace. We'll save that and preview this in our browser. And you can now see that my paragraphs are in that font style. And they're in the orange. So the text formatting styles are very easy to um, use. Now another property that we can use is the text align property. Let's say I want my main headings to be centered on the page instead of aligned to the left. I'm going to go ahead and do text align center. Save that. Preview it in a browser and now you can see those items are centered on the page whereas everything else is left to the left. I'm going to go ahead and make my H2s here align to the right. And now you can see that H2 has been moved all the way over to the right hand side of the page. We also had the property line spacing. And in order to see line spacing, I'm going to need a little bit larger paragraph. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy that chunk of text there. And I'm going to paste it in five or six times. Save it. And now when we look at it, yeah, I still need a little bit more text in there. Copy that. And just paste that in there a few more times. There we go. Now I've got a, a paragraph. And you can see the amount of space in between the lines. But I'm going to go ahead and say my line height should be 150% of whatever the normal is. And line height usually is specified um, as a percentage, um, but you can use a fixed value there. I could say the line height should be 16 pixels or 22 pixels or whatever I want. And when I go ahead and take a look at this, you can see that there is now more space in between my lines. Let me go ahead and open that up in a browser, and again, you can see that right there. I'll make it a little bit larger just to sort of emphasize the point. We'll make it 250 percent and now you can see there's much more space there and we'll preview that in our browser. So we can specify the line height um, for our text. And those are the basic um, font or text formatting properties that you're going to go ahead and use inside of um, CSS. We're going to talk more about how these properties are used to affect links um, in a different video. In the next video we're going to go ahead and learn about something called the box model. The box model. And that has to do with the way elements are spaced on your page. It has to do with margin and padding and also with placing borders around different um, elements. So that's where we're going in the next video. I'll see you then.